Okay, one of the solutions to this problem that we had, the invariance of the speed of light, was time dilation. We're going to go through the second one now. I want you to imagine Usain Bolt and the lineman standing with a 15 centimeter ruler, identical rulers, and then Usain Bolt starts to run at near the speed of light. At this point, the lineman will notice something strange. He will notice that Usain Bolt has gotten narrower, okay, in this direction. His height is the same, but he's narrower. So is the ruler. The ruler doesn't look 15 centimeters anymore. It looks shorter. But of course, to Hussein Bolt, he thinks he's, you know, his width of his body and his um, the ruler is the same size. But to him, he notices that the track is the track is going past him and is shorter. So for him, from his perspective, of course, the track and the line and everyone is moving past him. So to him, they look contracted. This is called length contraction. So length contraction is when the width of an object appears to be narrower in the direction it's moving in. Okay, it's the height of the object doesn't change because unless it's moving in that direction, so because the height is the same. Okay, so the width is narrower. Here's the length contraction formula, and as you can see, you've still got that Lorentz factor gamma, but this time the Lorentz factor is dividing the proper length. Okay, to avoid confusion between the proper length and the observed length, I'm going to give you some examples. The proper length is the length of an object in the frame of reference in which the object is stationary. For example, the length of Hussein Bolt's ruler according to Hussein Bolt, who's running with the ruler. So to Hussein Bolt, the ruler is stationary. Or you can say, for example, the length of the track according to the lineman, because the lineman is standing still on the track. The track isn't moving with respect to the lineman, so it also just seems, for example, 100 meters long. The length of a spaceship according to someone who's riding on the spaceship. Okay. Um, then we have the observed length. The length uh, of uh, the observed length is the length of an object in the direction of motion according to someone who sees the object moving at a velocity v. For example, the length of Hussein's ruler according to the lineman who sees that ruler moving past him at velocity v. Uh, the length of the track according to Hussein Bolt. So if you remember, Hussein Bolt can make the argument that the track is moving past him at a certain velocity. So to him, the track would not appear to be 100 meters long, it appears shorter. And finally, the length of this moving spaceship according to someone who's standing on Earth. So you, they see the spaceship going past them. Okay, so person X is on a train which is moving at a constant speed of 0 0.9 times the speed of light. So that's our V there. Person X measures the length of the carriage to be 12 meters. Person Y is standing on the platform and observes the train go, go by. Determine the length of the carriage according to person X and person Y. So A, person X. So the person X was measured the length of the carriage while the carriage was moving. So he, the person was measuring inside the frame of reference of the carriage. That's, that's just 12 meters. That is the proper length because per person X is within the carriage. While person B, uh, Y, sees the train going past him. So the train is going to appear narrower to him. It's going to appear length contracted. So let's work out gamma first. So gamma is going to be 1 over 1 minus, it's going to be 0. Point, um, don't forget the square root, 0. 0.9 squared. Okay, because that's is a shortcut there. So 2.294. Okay, so I know that the person Y will sh see the carriage being narrower. So I'm going to take 12 meters and I'm going to divide that by the Lorentz factor because I know that will make it smaller. So 5.23 meters. Okay, a beam of protons moving at speed here, 2.2 times 8 meters per second, takes 80 nanoseconds to cross the distance between the two detectors. Determine the distance between uh, between the detectors in the frame of reference of the protons. So firstly, just imagine you as a person standing here, and you see those pro beam of protons moving past um, at that speed, and it takes that 80 sec nanoseconds to go past. So you can just use the speed equals distance um, over over time formula to figure out the distance between them. So the distance will be velocity times time. Then that gives me 17.6 meters. 
Now, that is the distance between the two detectors. And because a person is standing at rest with respect to two detectors, that is the proper length. But the, for the beam of electrons, uh, so the beam of protons, the distance between detectors would appear narrower, just like how the track would appear narrow for Hussein Bolt. So what I need to do is I need to take this first list, work out gamma as well. So gamma is going to be 1 over 1 minus square root. So 2.2 2, um, squared. I can do a shortcut here. 3 squared. So the times 10 to the um, 8 would cancel out. So that gives me 1.471. 1. Okay. So the in the frame of reference of the protons, the distance would appear narrower, shorter. So what I'll do is I'll do 17.6 meters divided by 1.471 that gives me 12.0 meters.